Hi everybody, it's John from Wire here. I'm back with another video on how to create a MailChimp campaign from start to finish. And in this video, we're going to go over the new features that are available for 2017. And we're also going to see some of the integrations that I've talked about in earlier videos. Before you get started, I just wanted to let you know that there are a few requirements before you get started if you're following along. And one of those requirements is that you have a MailChimp account already registered and set up. So this is the landing page you're going to see once you create that account and you verify your email. And if you want to, and if you're using a Shopify store, I'd also encourage you to watch my video about Shopify integration. I will link that in the video description below. In addition to that, if you have questions on how to import a list and get your list built and started, you can also see my video in the description below on how to do that. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. So I've logged into my MailChimp account and I first want to go and click on create campaign. So I'm going to name this campaign something that I'm going to remember it by. It's not going to be viewed by anyone that's going to receive the campaign, so I can name it whatever I like. So I want to name this campaign um, discount email. And then usually I just like to put the month of when I send it out just for my own use so I can tell if I've sent too many or if I work with multiple companies um, just so I know what month it was sent out. So it is February of 2017. And for the campaign type, there's a lot of different ones you can do. But right now, we're just going to use regular because that's the easiest one. And it's the one I want to send to all my people in my list. And by default, it's going to be sent to my first newsletter, which has 630 subscribers. If you want to, you can click on group or new segment and uh, basically split up all these different people that are subscribed to the email list. But to keep it really simple, we're just going to do the entire list. So there's two ways you can navigate through this section. You can click on the links below here, or you can click on the Next button. So I clicked on Next, and here we are in the campaign info. So this is going to be the email subject. So what I like to do, and what I mentioned in my earlier videos, is I like to give people a reason to click through and read the email. Because, just being honest, if you put an email subject line like, um, open this email, or cool things inside. It doesn't really get people's interest. So what I like to do for each one of my email campaigns is I make it really clear what the person is going to get if they click on the email and read more. So what I'm going to put is exclusive discount inside plus plus sweet new products. Okay, so right off the bat, if a person received this in their email, they're going to see, huh, if I open this inside, I'm going to get a really cool deal because there's an exclusive discount. So this makes it so that people are more likely to open your email just right off the bat. Uh, the from name is going to be the name of your business or your group. And since I'm working with a company called Living Raw Treats, I'm going to leave that the same. And then the from email address is going to be an email that you have access to that you can check to see if people respond to. So I know that I've created this in my web post. I know that it's active and live and I can access it. So I'm just going to leave that the same. So the tracking section lets you know what happens once your email is sent out. So I always leave these checked because I do want to know when someone opens it. These are always required on the free accounts. And then Google Analytics link tracking. This is done through the Shopify integration that I mentioned earlier. So if you want to have the option for this, you have to listen to my other video where I talk about how to integrate with Shopify. Um, E-commerce link tracking is another thing uh, that is with the Shopify integration. And again, the link for that video on how to go ahead and integrate with that is in the description below. All right, so I'm just double checking all of my things right here. Um, exclusive discount side plus sweet new products. And then I'm just going to put the percentage discount. Okay, cool. You can go and add emojis if you feel like it. Um, I use them very, very sparingly. So if you do plan on using emojis, definitely don't go overboard or else you're just going to start annoying people. Um, but since I usually deal with chocolate companies, I know there's a chocolate bar one. So I'm probably going to use that one. And let me see if I can find it. Okay, I can also do this.
Okay. Cool. So see how it automatically converted that. If you're on a Mac and you want to add emojis into your subject line, you have to click on Control Command Spacebar, and it'll bring up this character section. I'm not really sure how to do it on Windows, but I know that you can go to an emoji list online and copy and paste them from there too. All right. So social media, um, I don't really like to connect to Twitter or Facebook for that, uh, just for the reason that I kind of, if I'm sending out a discount code in an email. I kind of want to make it exclusive for the people that have signed up for that email, but you can definitely, if you're not sending out a discount, you want everybody on your social media uh, feeds to see it, you can connect to Twitter and connect to Facebook and do it that way. So I don't have any videos inside of my email, so I'm not going to leave this, I'm not going to modify this at all. And on this side, I'm going to leave all of these the same. All right, so now I'm going to click on next. Great, so this is the section where you can choose a template that your email is going to look like. So what I like to do is I always like to have a header image that just shows what the products are and what the email is going to be about. And then usually I just have like a two column below that just outlining what I'm going to be talking about. So for that I like to use this one right here, it's the one two column. Of course if you want to talk about more things or if you like a different layout, by all means choose a different one in the template section. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to click on the one, two column. All right, and now I'm in my section where I can design the email. So on the right hand side, it's going to be the different drag and drop options. So if I wanted to have a social share, I can just drag and drop it there. And then all the settings and editing that you're going to be doing for each one of these different modules is going to be on your right hand side. So for right now, I don't really want that there, so I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to go and just work my way from the top to the bottom of the email. So I'm going to start right here. And you notice once I clicked on that, the content over here changed. So this is the area that the people are first going to see. Sometimes in Google, it's kind of like the teaser text. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this video once I have some text typed up here of what I want to say. Okay, so I've entered my text. I'm going to save and close. And again, I'm just working my way down the email, so I'm going to go into this section right here, and I'm going to upload an image to use as my header image. So if I click on Browse, it's going to load all my previous images that I've used prior, and I'm going to go and upload one for my computer, though, because if you're starting from scratch, you don't have anything down here. So I'm going to click on Upload, and then I'm going to my desktop, And then I already have a few pictures here that I'm going to uh, upload. Okay. So my first image is uploading, and this is going to be my title image. So there's a few different things you can do with images inside MailChimp. And the first thing you want to do is you want to, for retina image support with people with like MacBook Pros, you want to constrain the image dimensions by 50% for high definition displays. And the reason you want to do that is because it's going to look a lot more crisp and clear on people that do have that high definition displays. Um, the align is going to be center. And then content, if you want to, you can do some special things here. It's kind of like your own little uh, Photoshop knockoff. So let's say, for example, I want to increase the color. Um, or I wanted to, you know, increase the contrast or lower, it can make it a little bit higher. Um, you could do that. I know that I'm just going to leave it fine, um, minus the enhance here. I usually like to make it a little bit more high def and then apply. And then once you're done modifying your image, you just click on save, and then your image will automatically be updated in this section here. So this is now done except for one thing. Um, if a person receives this email and they click on this image, I want to direct them to my website. So what I'm going to do is click on link. I'm going to link to a web address. I'm just going to type in the URL of the website I want them to visit once they click on it. Okay, so that's my URL. Click on insert. And now um, I'll show you later when people click on that image, they'll be directed to the website I linked to. All right, so moving down the page, I'm clicking on this module. It's time to design your email. So now I'm going to put some content in here. I'm going to fast forward it, and then I'm going to come back once I get to this section here.
All right, so I entered my content here, and now I'm just going to make some things stand out. So I'm making this red so it stands out on the page. I'm going to add a hyperlink to my website here by using the link tool. And then I'm just going to center this text right here so it looks a little bit better. I want to make this stand out just a little bit more so under the size, I'm actually going to go to 18. Perfect. And this looks a little bit wonky, so I'm also going to center that. Great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save and close, and I'm going to go to this section right here. And I realized I don't really like this because instead of a text section here, I kind of just want two images. So it's super easy if I want to do that. Um, I just go and I delete this section, click on delete, and then I'm going to drop an image card right here where it used to be. So now I have two image cards that I'm able to modify. So for this image card, the first one, I'm going to browse for an image. And again, I'm going to upload one. And if you have a file on your desktop like I do right here, um, you can just drag and drop them into your browser too. So now I have both of those uploading right here. All right. And for this first one, I'm going to select the t-shirt. And now I'm going to click on select. Okay, so if you have an image that's a PNG file, it's going to have this black background because the application doesn't know uh, what color it's supposed to be. So what you want to do is you want to open up a program like Photoshop and you want to change that PNG to a JPEG with the background color of whatever your email is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now, upload my new image, and then show you what it looks like from PNG to JPEG. Great. So let's take a look at an error message that just popped up. It says, this image is so big it may obliterate inboxes. Images should be around 600 to 800 pixels wide. So if you get this message, you have to click on let's fix it. And then it's going to take you to the resize tool. So usually a good size you want to use is 600 by 800. Click on apply. And now that message is going to go away. Great. All right, so we have our image there. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this while I write some text at the bottom. And while I'm doing that, you can go ahead and drop your own image in there. Make sure it's a JPEG, and then we can continue from there. All right, so I've updated my content right here, and I clicked on Save and Close. And now I'm going to go ahead and insert an image here onto the right-hand section. So I'm just going to click on it, and then click on Browse. Okay, so I'm going to use the image that I uploaded earlier. Instead of clicking on Upload, I'm just going to select what image I want. And then I'm going to put some content in here, and then I'll show you how to line these up so it's really even. So give me one second. I'm going to go ahead and update this content, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I've added some content here, and I clicked on Save and Close. But you realize there's something weird going on here. These images are not aligned, so I want to make it look really pretty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Photoshop and show you how you can just make sure that the same image dimensions are for each one of your images. So the way we're going to do that is open Photoshop or an image editor of your choice. I'm going to open this uh, item that I already have here, and then I'm going to open my other document that has my t-shirt. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the content of my second image that needs to fit the first one. I'm going to paste it into the section with my first image that I want to copy the length of. And I'm just going to align it right in the center and then uncheck the lock button and then delete that first layer. So now what happens is when I export this as a JPEG, it's going to be the same image dimensions as my first image. Okay, now I'm going back to MailChimp, clicking on my section that I want to replace. I'm going to click on Upload, choosing the t-shirt option, or excuse me, choosing the wholesale option that I've just done. And now you'll see that both of these are perfectly aligned. So now I can go ahead and fix this image so it's not really huge.
Great. All right. And now I'm just going to add a little bit more content right here so that this black box equals the same length of this black box. Okay. So I'm clicking on save and close. And now I'm just continually going down the page and hitting each one of these sections. So the Twitter URL or username, I'm just going to copy and paste the URL to my Twitter account. Same with Facebook and same with the website. If you want to, you can add another thing here too. Um, they have a lot of different social media options. So I don't really want this one though, so I'm just going to get rid of both of these and just leave it with the core. And once I go ahead and update these URLs, I'm going to come back and then click on Save and Close. Okay, great. So I went ahead and added um, my different URLs for my different social media websites. So I'm going to click on Save and Close. And then finally, I'm going to click on this section. And you have to leave some of these details here. And you can read about it right here because some of them are required for MailChimp to send. Um, I honestly just leave all this information the same because these weird looking um, formats right here are going to auto populate. And I'll show you how they auto populate once we do the test email. So I'm just going to save and close that for now. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is go back through my email and just make sure that everything is linked up correctly. So if you remember when we added these two images, we didn't do one important thing that we did with this image right here. And that was add a link to the different website pages that we want to link these people to. So I'm going to go ahead and find the web address URL for this t-shirt on my website and then paste it right here so that if someone clicks on this link with the t-shirt, they're taken right to that website. So let me go ahead and grab that real quick. All right, so I copy and pasted it and then I clicked on insert. Same for this image right here. I'm going to link it to my wholesale page. All right, so I've linked both of them together. Going up here, and I'm making sure that this link is correct. And it is. Going up here, and I'm double checking that this link is correct. It looks like they took it away. Nope, it's still there. Okay. And now I'm just making sure that these are all correct. Great. So let's say for each one of these sections, I want to have a button on the bottom that just directs people to where they can purchase or view each one of these pages. So in order to do that, I'm just going to make it really easy. I'm going to drag a button into the block below. And then the button text, I'm going to say buy now. And I'm just going to link directly to the URL where they can buy that shirt. All right, I'm going to do the same thing for this section here. Instead of buy now, I'm going to say so program details, just so it fits on one line. I'm going to do the URL address. And again, if you want to get fancy and edit the color, you just have to go to the style section um, and the background colors where you're going to be changing all that information. So now I'm going to click on the next button, which is going to take us to the confirm page. And what I want to do is I want to preview and test the email. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a test email to myself, which is going to show me how it's going to look once it's said delivered to the inbox. So I'm going to do that right now. And then I'm going to bring up my email to show you what the email looks like once it's been sent. Okay, so the email just arrived. So I'm looking at the email and the first thing I'm looking at is the title. And I'm checking for spelling errors. I'm looking for anything that doesn't look aligned correctly. And I'm also looking to make sure that everything is formatted correctly. So I'm looking at this right here. Okay, I'm testing all these links. So I'm going to click on each one of them. I'm going to make sure they direct me to the right URL. And it does. I'm going to test this link as well. I'm also going to test this link as well. Perfect. Okay, great. So for this one, I don't really like this because it looks like it's not really aligned correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this image, upload a new one, and then see if that makes a difference. So I'm going to fast forward this part and then come back. Okay, so I went ahead and updated that and that looks a lot better. So again, I'm just looking for spelling errors. I'm looking for broken links. 
and I'm looking for anything that just doesn't look right in this email. And do you remember earlier when I mentioned that this would all auto-populate? Well, it does. So it's no longer those weird uh, formats we saw earlier. It auto-populates the information that's included on your MailChimp account. And again, this is required for the most part in each email that you send. So uh, just leave it the way it is. So I'm also testing these social media links at the bottom of the page. All right, looks good. So now before I do anything, and this is just a complete side note for people that are using Shopify, you want to make sure this uh, discount code exists before you send this email out. Because I have done it in the past where I send out an email with a discount code or a special offer, and the special offer isn't there. So I'm going to go ahead and create this special code real quick and then come back to this email once I've done that. All right, so I went ahead and created that discount code, and now what I'm going to do is click on the next button, and now I'm going to go through each and every one of these and just make sure that it's correct. So I'm looking at the first one. I'm saying, okay, it's going to go to all of my recipients in this list, and I want that to happen. This is my subject line. I'm going to make sure that this is correct and there's no spelling errors. I'm going to make sure that this email address exists and that people can reply to it. I'm going to make sure that my tracking is all set up the way I want it. I'm going to make sure that the format of my email is correct as well. I'm going to make sure that all the rest of these are fine. And if I want to change any one of these different options, I'm just going to click on the edit button. But for right now, I think that all these are good. So if you want to, and it's completely optional before you do it, you can enter the preview mode in the upper right hand corner here. And this is going to show you what your email is going to look like on each one of these different platforms. Um, inbox is for paid members only, but for desktop and for mobile, we can see what the email is going to look like. So this looks pretty good to me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the send button. And this is your final moment of glory. So when you click on the send now button, it's going to send your email to all of your email subscribers that are located right here. So you can know exactly what newsletter section it's going to send to and the number of people it's going to hit. So once you click on send now, you can't go and make changes to your email. So I'd really recommend you check all the links and you check all the pictures and you check all the text for spelling errors before you send it out. And once you've done all that and you've ensured that they all work, click on send now and you are ready to go. All right, so the email has been sent out, so you can go ahead and high-five the monkey because you are all done here. Um, it's going to give you a little synopsis as to where it went, how many subscribers, and where it was sent to. But now all you need to do is sit back and relax as those emails are delivered. I really hope this helped you out, and if you have any questions, I do read each and every message that's posted below my videos. Um, so if you do have anything that you want to ask or if something wasn't clear, just go ahead and leave a comment below, and I'll go ahead and address it at a later time. For now, that's all I have, but I hope you have a great day, and uh, good luck on setting your campaigns, everybody. Bye now.